Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Louisiana Pacific Corporation, ticker symbol LPX. We're looking at Louisiana Pacific Corp today because this is one of the only businesses that Berkshire Hathaway purchased in the fourth quarter of 2022. Berkshire initiated its original position in the company in quarter three of 2022 and added on slightly again in the fourth quarter as well. Louisiana Pacific Corp has also been one of the leading Uber cannibals, meaning that they bought back an insane amount of their shares outstanding over their last five years, which we'll cover in more depth. Even with that being the case, the business is still down 7.5% over the last year, which even though they're down, they're actually outperforming the S&P 500 over this period. Currently, Louisiana Pacific Corp is trading for $64.80 per share. Over the last five years, it's a completely different story for the business. The business is compounding its stock price at a rate of just under 18% annually. The business is up nearly five times since its lows in March of 2022. Over the last 10 years, Louisiana Pacific Corp is compounding its stock price at 12.5% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last nearly 18 years, Louisiana Pacific Corp is compounding its stock price at a rate of 5.5% annually. Keep in mind that this is starting them off during the housing bubble. So even since the housing bubble, they've had an all right return for shareholders. From the company's lows during the global financial crisis over this period, the company's stock price has increased by more than 30 times. And the business also pays out dividends. Currently, they have about a 1.6% dividend yield. So Louisiana Pacific Corp is down $14 from their 52-week high. They're up about $16 from their 52-week low. Right now, about 5% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short, and they have about a $4.6 billion market cap. So for additional background about the business, Louisiana Pacific is primarily an oriented strand board producer while offering engineered wood siding used in home construction and repair and remodeling projects. The company is largely exposed to the North American housing market, but also has an established capacity in Brazil and Chile. The company operates through four segments, siding, oriented strand board, engineered wood products, and South America. Louisiana Pacific sells its products primarily to retailers, wholesalers, and home building and industrial businesses in North America, South America, Asia, Australia, and Europe. Louisiana Pacific Corp. was incorporated in 1972 and is headquartered in Nashville, Tennessee. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Louisiana Pacific Corp. based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over their last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital, so by looking for a benchmark of 14% or higher here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Louisiana Pacific Corp. has had its returns on capital fluctuate throughout this time frame. They earned a low of only 5% on their capital in 2019. However, since the COVID-19 pandemic, their returns on capital have really skyrocketed, especially as they bought back a large amount of their shares. The business earned 106% returns on capital in their fiscal 2021, and over their last 12 months, the business has earned 81% returns on capital. Those have been massive returns for the business, and so over these last five years, Louisiana Pacific Corp. is earning 40% average returns on capital, so that's massively above those of the returns of a typical business. That's about three times better than that benchmark we're looking for, so this is a check on metric number one, and these returns are about six times better than those of a typical business. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking an overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over their last five years. We're also going to be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations here. And this metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. So over this time frame, Louisiana Pacific has grown their revenues by about 70%. They really took off as housing took off in 2020 and 2021, and they've still grown by quite a bit over their last 12 months. Their net incomes over this time have more than tripled, and their free cash flows have also tripled. 
So this is really strong growth across the board here for Louisiana Pacific Corp. This is a check on metric number two. The business is exercising operating leverage here as their earnings and their free cash flows have grown faster than their revenues. Also great to see that their free cash flows are up so dramatically here because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business. And a business can use its free cash flows to pay dividends, buy back shares, make acquisitions, reinvest back in the company, or pay down debt. Ultimately, a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is what that business is going to be worth. Again, great to see such strong growth for Louisiana Pacific. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Louisiana Pacific on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years for the business. With their incomes more than tripling over this time frame, their earnings per share growth are going to be dependent on their shares outstanding. And as mentioned, Louisiana Pacific has been an uber cannibal over this time frame. They've been one of the leading companies in terms of their share buybacks. And over the last five years, Louisiana Pacific has bought back 44% of their shares outstanding which is just insane, meaning that they bought back almost half of the business during this time frame. This matters because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a business buys back stock by decreasing the number of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which is ultimately going to increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. And so just like with any other acquisition, we want a company to be buying back shares when they're getting more value than the price that they're paying. In practical terms, we want a business to be buying back shares when their stock price is trading for below the intrinsic value of a business, and it looks like an attractive use of their capital relative to some of their other business opportunities. So Louisiana Pacific has had very strong earnings per share growth over this time frame. Over their last 12 months, the business has earned $13.82 for each share that they've had outstanding. And this is a very strong check here on metric number three. As a follow-up to metric number three, here we're looking at their weighted shares outstanding over this time frame, And they bought back shares in all five of these years. Really things have come down pretty dramatically in their share count since 2020. And over their last 12 months as well, currently the business has about 82 million shares outstanding over this time frame. So again, they bought back about half of the company in the last five years alone. Next up, metric number four is going to be very similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years for the business. For almost the exact same reasons that their earnings per share are up over this time frame, their free cash flows per share are going to be up as well. Over their last 12 months, Louisiana Pacific has produced $10.99 worth of free cash flow per each share that they've had outstanding. This is another check here in metric number four. And so far through our first four metrics, we're perfect four for four for Louisiana Pacific. Next up, for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over the last five years. So Louisiana Pacific Corp right now has negative net debt, meaning that after paying off all of their debt, the business is left over with $83 million worth of cash. And over their last five years, the business has produced more than $2.4 billion worth of free cash flow. So they've been cash flow positive in four of these five years, and massively so since the COVID-19 pandemic. Over their last 12 months, the business has produced $900 million worth of free cash flow. And so with a cash cushion on their balance sheet, and with the business being massively cash flow generative over this time frame, this is another solid check here on metric number five. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want to see if Louisiana Pacific has what it takes to go a perfect six for six on our select six analysis. So we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this may potentially offer us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of the business, and it will potentially offer a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury as well. So we learned in our previous metric that Louisiana Pacific has produced $2.4 billion worth of free cash flow over their last five fiscal years, meaning that in an average year, the business has produced about $490 million worth of free cash flow. 
And currently, Louisiana Pacific has about a $4.5 billion total enterprise value. So we're using their enterprise value because it takes into account both the company's market cap and their net debt position. And it will give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if Louisiana Pacific Corp was a private company. So when we divide their $490 million of their average free cash flow by their $4.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us more than a 10.5% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. So that's more than twice that 5% risk premium that we were ideally seeking. And that's a little bit better than about three times the yield of the 10-year treasury, meaning that Louisiana Pacific Corp has done it. This is a check here on metric number six, and the business is a perfect select six stock. They go six for six on our analysis today. So just because this is the case doesn't mean that you're going to go run out and buy the business. This type of analysis is not financial advice, and it's meant to give a holistic and beginning understanding of Louisiana Pacific based off of their financials. It would look like this business, especially with its recent purchases from Berkshire, would be a particularly interesting business to dig into and learn more about. And worth being aware of as well is that over their last 12 months, the business has earned $901 million worth of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $900 million of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their total enterprise value of $4.5 billion, that gives us about a 20% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. That would be a yield that's much higher than their averages, almost double from what they've been at. It is worth noting that Louisiana Pacific, as a housing materials producer, is going to be exposed to the housing industries in the different countries that they operate in. So that industry is historically cyclical in nature. And so that's just something you'd want to be mindful of here as well. So the business is looking good on our analysis today, and we've still got some interesting aspects of the business left to cover. So here as a bonus, we're taking a look at Louisiana Pacific's dividend profile. Currently, the business is paying out a 1.4% dividend yield. We want to look at their dividend profile to see whether their dividend payouts are healthy and supported by the business's ability to produce free cash flows given the type of business Louisiana Pacific Corp is. That's been the case in three of these four years that they paid out dividends. Over this time frame, they started paying out dividends in 2018, and they paid out dividends over their last 12 months as well. They've been able to healthily support their dividend payouts since 2020, maintaining a very small dividend payout ratio and using the majority of these excess free cash flows to buy back their stock. The business did take on some debt in 2019. They also had a cash cushion at the end of 2018, and their free cash flows during that period period were able to support their dividend payouts. So given the stronger financial health of the business, it likely wasn't as bad for them to continue paying out dividends in 2019, even when they were cash flow negative, as it would have been for some other types of businesses. Again, keep in mind that this business is likely cyclical in nature. And so even though they've massively been able to support their dividends recently, that may not be potentially the case going forward for the business. You would just want to dig in and understand the business and their approach to capital allocation going forward. If their abilities to return capital to shareholders through their dividends and their share buybacks are something that really interests you and attracts you to this business. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Louisiana Pacific Corp, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for Louisiana Pacific. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with an average of their free cash flows over their last five years to give us a more normalized perspective of the business's abilities to produce free cash flows. Then we're using historical growth assumptions for how the business has grown dating back to the late 1990s in order to give a baseline estimate for these free cash flows going forward. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward forward for Louisiana Pacific in order, in order to give us a baseline projected estimate for the company over their next 20 years. So if we assume that their average free cash flows would decline at a rate of 1% annually for the next 10 years, then assume that in the 10 years out after that, that their average free cash flows decline at a rate of 3% annually. If we then add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an approximation of the company's tangible net worth per share, which in this case will also be skewed based off how the accounting is done for their share buybacks. And if we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is ideally looking for from his investments in addition to his margin of safety requirements for a business, then it looks like at today's valuations of Louisiana Pacific, 
that a fair value for the company is right around $60 per share, meaning that this is about $5 below their current stock price, but this is well within the range of where Berkshire Hathaway could have been buying into the business in both the third and fourth quarters of 2022 over the last two quarters. So this could fit with some of the potential assumptions used around Berkshire's investment into the business. Although it's worth digging in and learning more, please be mindful of a couple of caveats here. So one is that this discount rate would be including their 1.4% dividend yield, so we would not be doubly counting their dividends. Additionally, because they're a building materials company, again, as we've noted, they operate and support a cyclical industry. And so a discounted cash flow model is really based off the predictability of a business's future free cash flows. So there are reasons why this company may not have as predictable future free cash flows as some other types of businesses. Then finally, please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. In just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for Louisiana Pacific Corp, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those that support the key points for either a potential long or a potential short thesis of the company? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for the business. Number one, the sale of Louisiana Pacific's engineered wood products business will enable margin expansion as the firm focuses on its higher value products. Number two, Louisiana Pacific is well positioned to benefit from continued growth of engineering wood siding at the expense of vinyl, brick, stone, and stucco. And number three, a continued shift from plywood to OSB in single-family housing should provide a strong tailwind for Louisiana Pacific's sizable OSB business. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the business, number one, U.S. home buyers could continue a shift toward multifamily units rather than single-family, causing OSB and siding demand to decline. Number two, the engineered wood siding market has grown rapidly in recent years, but Louisiana Pacific will struggle to take additional market share from traditional siding materials going forward. And number three, Louisiana Pacific's reliance on OSB profitability could put the firm at risk during times of economic weakness. So hopefully that offers a potentially balanced perspective around some of the key qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our recap. So in summary, Louisiana Pacific is a perfect select six stock. They go six for six on our analysis today. The company has averaged 40% returns on capital over their last five years. Their revenues, net incomes, and free cash flows have grown massively over this time frame, and the business has experienced some operating leverage due to their earnings and free cash flows growing faster than their revenues. Amazingly, Louisiana Pacific has repurchased 44% of their shares outstanding over their last five years alone. So they bought back about half of their business over this time frame, and they've really ramped up share buybacks since the COVID-19 pandemic. That has been where the majority of their free cash flows have gone. Even with these massive share buybacks, the company has a slight cash cushion, and they've been massively cash flow generative over this time frame, and they're still cash flow generative over their last 12 months as well. On both an average and a current basis of their free cash flow to their enterprise value, when we compare that to the yield of the 10-year treasury, it looks like Louisiana Pacific is offering an attractive yield relative to the yield of the 10-year treasury and that there could be a potential risk premium in the company's abilities to produce free cash flows. When we looked at the business's dividend profile, they started paying out dividends again four years ago, and they've supported their dividend payouts in three of these four years, being able to do so quite easily, maintaining a very small dividend payout ratio. In the only year where they did not, the company did come off of a solid year of free cash flows, so it does look like the business would be able to support its free cash flows going forward. But again, they operate in a cyclical industry. So their dividend payouts are really going to depend on their free cash flows. And the company has chosen to really return capital to shareholders through buybacks. Right. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Louisiana Pacific. If you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable for the business going forward, and you are ideally seeking a 15% rate of return from the company, then it looks like a potential fair intrinsic value for Louisiana Pacific. Pacific is right around $60 per share today. That's down about $5 from their current stock price, but that falls well within the range of where someone at Berkshire Hathaway could have been investing into the business over the last two quarters. Again, though, there are reasons why this analysis and this model may not be potentially accurate for the business, so it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice, it's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security, and before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy 
to dig in and learn more about Louisiana Pacific. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track, buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your rating experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make research easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 119 bucks. That's just 33 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but if you use my link, it's 50% off. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that company and understand what's important and what's not important for the business going forward. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Louisiana Pacific, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a more reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Louisiana Pacific Corporation, ticker symbol LPX. Again, Again, we looked at Louisiana Pacific today because in Berkshire Hathaway's previous two 13F filings over the third and fourth quarters of 2022, it was revealed that the company both initiated an investment in Louisiana Pacific and then added to that investment in Q4. This was one of the only businesses that Berkshire Hathaway increased their investment in in the fourth quarter of 2022. And with the company performing so well on our analysis today, it's potentially an interesting business to dig into and learn more about. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Louisiana Pacific with me, and have a great day.